Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in this video today, we're going to be talking about how the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have clinched a playoff berth for the 2020 season. This is a big deal, okay? I mean, I'm sure every single Bucks fan who is going to be watching this video is going to be excited and just kind of give a sigh of just, <sighs> finally, you know, finally the Bucks are back in the playoffs. So just for a frame of reference, it has been 13 years since the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have last made the playoffs. And I have a question for all of you guys, and I want you to answer down in the comments section below. How old were you the last time the Tampa Bay Buccaneers made the playoffs? Myself, I am 24 years old, which means I was 11 the last time the Buccaneers made the playoffs. It's been over half of my life since the Buccaneers last made the playoffs. That's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. So to say that I'm pretty darn excited, I think would absolutely be an understatement. The last time the Buccaneers made the playoffs, by the way, John Gruden was still the head coach. Jeff Garcia was the Bucks quarterback. That's how long it's been, guys. Seriously. Um, and ironically enough, the Buccaneers lost in the wild card round to the New York Giants, who would eventually go on to defeat Tom Brady and the New England Patriots in that Super Bowl. Now, fast forward 13 years, and man, things have changed. Uh, John Gruden is long gone from this team. The Buccaneers had went through just really a revolving door of head coaches trying so many different things until they landed on a guy who finally brought them back to the playoffs, Bruce Arians. Now, I will be fair. Uh, there have been a lot of ups and a decent chunks of downs in terms of the overall season for the Buccaneers as a whole. A lot of it being pointed at the coaching staff and questions regarding Bruce Arians and his decision making, Byron Leftwich and his offensive play calling, and all these other different types of things. But at the end of the day, everything has come together, and the Buccaneers have finally made the playoffs. Second longest playoff drought in NFL, you know, in the current NFL, I guess I should say. Second longest playoff drought, 13 years. I believe the number one is the Cleveland Browns at 17 years. That one is also going to be broken as well. But still, the Buccaneers are in the playoffs. Now, there are many people to thank for this happening. Let's start on the offensive side of the football. Tom Brady, the quarterback. Right now, as it stands, with one game left to play, he holds the single-season uh, record for most touchdown passes by a quarterback in Buccaneers franchise history. I believe he has 36 right now, breaking the previous record held by Jameis Winston, who broke it last year with 33 touchdowns. Tom Brady's had a phenomenal year in year one of Bruce Arians' offense. And I remember there were plenty of people saying, you know, how is Tom Brady going to fit in Bruce Arians' system? He potentially is washed. He might not have the arm strength he used to have and all these other different types of things, which overall were definitely overstating, or I guess just over, you know, whatever it is, being overly pessimistic about the situation. Because right now as it stands, Tom Brady still looks like one of the better quarterbacks in the entire NFL, I would definitely still put him probably in the top six or seven. That's how good he's been this year. And he's been able to make every single throw that has been asked of him in year one of Bruce Arians' offense. This has been the best quarterback performance of any quarterback who has had a year one performance in Bruce Arians' offense. And it makes sense because Tom Brady, the GOAT, you know, the greatest quarterback of all time? Yeah, it would make sense that he would be able to defy all the odds and all the criticism thrown against him and say, you know what, I'm still going to go out there and play amazing. And, you know, whenever the offseason was going on, I myself did not fully think that Tom Brady was going to be the quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I thought that he was going to go to a team like the Los Angeles Chargers and, you know, just kind of work from there because the Buccaneers never get you know, the big-time quarterback on their team, right? Like, they never do. You know, the big-time free agents, they never really come here a whole heck of a lot. But Tom Brady actually freaking did it. He came to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and in one year, he has helped bring this team back to the playoffs, and it's absolutely incredible. So Tom Brady's definitely high up there on the list of people to thank for being responsible for, be for this team being back 
in the playoffs. Some other people on the offensive side of the football, Ronald Jones, who still has a chance potentially to be a 1,000-yard rusher for this team, if not still finishing at 900 yards before the playoffs, is amazing, and that's incredible, and that's still one of the best running back performances the Buccaneers have had since the Doug Martin days, back when he was in his prime. So Ronald Jones has definitely got a very bright future ahead of him. Mike Evans also right now has a chance to have his own NFL record uh, because he might have the record for most consecutive 1,000-yard seasons to start a career-breaking you know, NFL Hall of Famer Randy Moss's record, that's kind of a big deal. Uh, he only needs 39 yards in Week 17 to have that record, so there's a lot of good stuff. Chris Godwin is still a very young rising star in the wide receiver core. Even Antonio Brown has been able to come in and make plays when he's needed to. Rob Gronkowski came out of retirement, was traded from the New England Patriots to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and while he doesn't look like Gronk in his prime, he still looks like a top half tight end in the NFL, and he can still do Gronk things. Along the offensive line, Tristan Wirfs is playing like an all-pro right tackle in his first year in the league. So to say I'm, you know, excited about the future of Tristan Wirfs, again, I think is an understatement. I think he's going to be phenomenal for many years for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Alex Kappa has had very big leaps from year one to year two to year three. Ryan Jensen is still playing like one of the top centers in the NFL. Ali Marpet is still playing like one of the top guards in the NFL. And then even in the case of Donovan Smith, I will say the best thing about Donovan Smith and his play is his availability. While his play has been up and down, while my expectations are still very much meh in terms of how I feel he will do overall, at least he's been there and at least he has been available. On the defensive side of the football, just kind of going through the entire team, and Dominic Asu has come in. He replaced Gerald McCoy two years ago, and he really has been very solid filling in for the former number 93, now being the current number 93. He has been playing, you know, pretty darn well in terms of run defense and even showing some pass rushing still given his age around 34 years old. He has been very solid along the defensive line. I do want to mention Vita Vea because he still is a big part of this and I wish he could be here, but unfortunately that is not the case. So I do want to mention fill-ins like Nacho, Raheem Nunez, Roach, and Steve McLennan, who the Buccaneers traded for earlier on in this season. They've both been, uh, done very good jobs filling in for that Vita Vea role, which is a gigantic hole to fill, by the way. And then Will Golson, who has actually had a very underrated year in terms of run defense. He has been, in my opinion, a very solid run defending defensive end. I would say one of the better half run defensive defensive ends in the entire league. And he has been very low key, very under the radar, and I wanted to give him some love here. He's been doing very good. In the linebacking core, Shaq Barrett, Jason Pierre-Paul, both those guys still potentially could finish with double-digit sacks. It may seem more likely that only one of them will, but still, Shaq Barrett as it stands is at eight sacks. Jason Pierre-Paul is at nine and a half sacks. I will take that every day of the week. Shaq Barrett is probably not going to be going anywhere. He's probably going to be signing some type of mid to long term extension with the Buccaneers. Jason Pierre Paul is still under contract with this team for the next year or so, maybe even two years. So having both those guys as your two main pass rushers is a very, very good combo, in my opinion. And then in the middle linebacker room, you've got Levante David, one of the best, most underrated middle linebackers in the entire NFL. He has still been doing Levante David things, and I feel like he's earned this more than anybody, really. I mean, he was not here the last time the Tampa Bay Buccaneers made the playoffs. Nobody was from this team, but still, it's absolutely phenomenal that um, he can still you know, be a part of this team. He's played his whole career with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I hope he ends his career with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he's been great every single year we've had him. Um, and then Devin White, who right now is one of the best young linebackers in the entire NFL. He still has some kinks he needs to work out in his game, but the dude's at eight. No, no, he's actually at nine sacks right now for a middle linebacker. He may be a middle linebacker that finishes with double-digit sacks, and he's been everywhere. He's been getting tackles for loss in the run game. He's been getting pass rush and sacks in terms of his overall, uh, you know, attacking the passer, the quarterback. He's been getting pass deflections and, you know, coverage and things like that as well. Devin White's been able to do everything you want a middle linebacker to do, and he's the perfect partner to be next to Levante David in a 3-4 defense. 
In the secondary, Carlton Davis is still my hashtag number one corner. He's had a very solid year this year. He has had to deal with injuries, has, as has the other Buccaneers cornerbacks, but overall, he's been very solid. Sean Murphy Bunting, he has been very up and down. Jamel Dean, he has been dealing with injuries in his own right. But overall, I'm proud of the secondary and what they've been able to do, or I guess the cornerback room and what they've been able to do to overcome injuries and overall uh, just continue to go out there and play every single week. In the safety room... Mike Edwards, you know, he hasn't been playing a ton. He's not a starter, but he's still been able to go out there and make splash plays when he is needed to. Antoine Winfield Jr., the second-round draft pick from this most recent NFL draft, has been playing amazing. He is a first-round talent by far. He has been everywhere. He's been a ball hawk. He's been getting pass deflections. He's been solid in pass rush and in run defense as well. He's another guy who can do everything that you want to be done at the safety position. I'm very happy that he is in a system with Todd Bowles' defense. And then, finally, you have Jordan Whitehead on that defense, who has also been very solid in run defense, has been making some plays in the passing game, and has overall been a young, bright, up-and-coming safety as well. In the special teams unit, Bradley Pinion has been having one of his best years as a punter. Ryan Suckup has finally dug the Tampa Bay Buccaneers out of the depths of just kicker woes and kicker problems. I mean, these two guys really have rejuvenated the Buccaneers special teams unit and has been amazing to see. And then, heck, I'll even throw, you know, long snapper Zach Triner in there and say good job to him for overall filling in his role as a long snapper. And I wanted to mention all of these guys because the Buccaneers would not be where they are right now, making the playoffs. If all of these guys did not have a hand week in and week out making plays and, you know, helping the Buccaneers win games. So I wanted to list every single starter the Buccaneers had on this team because all these guys are a big deal to this team. On the coaching staff, Bruce Arians, the head coach, I know a lot of people have thrown criticism towards his way, but overall I have been happy with how Bruce Arians has done as the head coach of this football team, and he also played a very key part in getting the Buccaneers back to the playoffs. Offensive coordinator Byron Leftwich, I know, has even more criticism thrown his way, but overall, I feel that the offense, you know, while it's not always been efficient, and while they have definitely had their fair share of slow starts this year, they have done some pretty good things this year um, in games that have made this offense look absolutely amazing. Now, I don't know if that is because of Byron Lethwich or in spite of Byron Lethwich, but the point is that he is the offensive play caller, and, you know, while a lot of people are quick to point out the bad, you do have to point out the good as well. And then finally, you know, the defensive coordinator, Todd Bowles, has been blitzing like an absolute madman this season. Um, and that has been a large reason as to why the Buccaneers have had success on overall pass rush and things like that. They are the top blitzing team in the NFL still, I believe, but they are also one of the top teams in pressures against the quarterbacks as well as getting sacks against the quarterback as well. So that aggressive style fits a lot of these players on this Buccaneers defense perfectly, and I'm very happy to have Todd Bowles as the Buccaneers defensive coordinator. And I'll even throw Keith Armstrong out there. As the special teams coordinator, I think that he's done a very good job of making sure the special teams unit is very disciplined and very ready in regards to certain things. Um, and then, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it in terms of all the coaches. I guess I can throw out names like Clyde Christensen, who I believe actually was here the last time the Buccaneers made the playoffs. But him, Tom Moore, the offensive consultant, or I guess coaching consultant of Bruce Arians. Shout out to Tom Moore and just all the other guys on that coaching staff. Um... Yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out to all these people and just say thank you. I'm sure none of them will probably watch this video, but it's just awesome that all these people on this team right now have had a hand in the Buccaneers making the playoffs. And I know nothing's guaranteed. The Buccaneers could lose in round one. I don't know who the Buccaneers are going to play in the playoffs. They could play Seattle or the Rams or the Washington football team or anybody, and they could lose in round one. But the fact that they are getting back to the playoffs after 13 years is so monumental and I wanted to make this video today just to say man it feels good and to say thank you to every single player every single coach who has had a hand in getting the Buccaneers back to the playoffs it means the world to me as a Bucks fan and I know it means the world to all of you guys as well but guys that's gonna be it for this video I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next video or the next live stream but until then and as always guys goodbye for now and go Bucks.